This is a video on multimeters for beginners. Uh, in this video, we're going to be checking voltage in ohms. Uh, if you check back here at a later date, I'll have other videos on more uh, basic functions and more advanced functions. You can find me on SaturnFans.com uh, under the username of Campus189. So let's get on with it. There's two types of meters. There's analog meters, which you're seeing right here. Uh, if you look, there's a little needle. There's a lot of numbers you have to worry about reading, uh, difficult to read, and you have to worry about uh, dropping them and calibration and all this other fun stuff. We're going to be focusing on two different types of meters here, and these are digital multimeters. These are pretty much uh, great for the beginner. Uh, as well as the advanced user because you can pretty much see uh, the numbers on them which is nice. They can be obtained at AutoZone, Advanced Auto, O'Reilly Auto Parts or Harbor Freight. The one on the right can be obtained from Harbor Freight relatively uh, inexpensively, $10, $15 more. As you can see they're almost $38. Uh, they're real, real time savers, nice to have, a lot of functions. Once you have your multimeter out of the box or you're ready to use your multimeter, you want to stick your negative terminal, that would be the black one, in the COM, which is common. Uh, you'll see highlighted by the arrow right here. That's the first thing you want to do. Just connect the black one and no other one. Now, what I like about this particular meter is if you put the, the meter on voltage, if you notice, there's a little red light that lights up. Now, what you're not seeing or hearing, I should say, is an audio beep. If you do not connect the probe, this will blink. As indicated by the arrow, you'll see a light, and it'll blink as well to let you know which probe you need to connect and to where to connect it to, which is kind of a nice feature. It's pretty much dum-dum proof. Now, in this picture, we're going to be t checking the voltage on a AA battery. If you look, we have two arrows. There is a red arrow and a black one. The red is positive, and the black is negative. This shows you where to connect your probes and how to connect them. Uh, this multimeter is auto-ranging, so you just put it on voltage, and it will measure your voltage automatically. Uh, here, you can see we have 1.3 volts. So, the battery is a little low, but uh, it's still functional. Like I said, this is how you check a uh, battery on a car. This would be how you check a battery on a uh, battery that you have. Do not check household AC current. This is for DC only, which is direct current. Now we're going to go over continuity. What is continuity? You might be asking, what is it? Don't worry, it's quite simple. Continuity means there's two things electrically connected. So if two electronic parts are connected with a wire, they're continuous. You can always use a resistant meter, ohmmeter, multimeter, to figure out if something is connected because the resistance of the wires is very small, less than 100 ohms usually. However, continuity testers usually have a buzzer which beeps. This makes them very useful when you want to poke at a circuit and need to focus on where the probes are instead of staring at the meter display. For some basic circuits, you can just look to see where the wires go to determine continuity, but it's always wise to use a multimeter. Sometimes wires break or fuses go bad. This is the fastest way of finding a wire that is broken or a fuse that is broken or blown. Now we're going to test continuity. You want to place your selector switch in the ohms position highlighted by the red arrow. If you look at the purple arrow, it's showing that you're in the ohms position. That's what you're looking for. Now what you want to do is touch your positive and your negative probes together and you should see it zero out across the board like you see up above. This shows that you have true continuity. Now let's say you want the audio option on this so you don't have to look at the screen to see it zero out. In other words, to tell whether or not that you have continuity. Press your select button highlighted by the red arrow while it's in the ohms position and once you do that, if you look, you're going to see by the purple arrow an audio indicator light up. Again, it depends on your multimeter, but that will give you your audio confirmation that uh, it is hooked up. So when you touch your two probes together, you will get an audio confirmation and you won't have to look at your screen. Okay, now we're going to test this piece of wire. This piece of wire, if it's on continuity and the audio uh, is enabled on it, selected, and you connect a solid piece of wire, this is what you're actually going to hear. You're going to hear this sound. Uh, this lets you know that you actually have a good connection between a solid piece of wire and it's not broken. Now what happens if we have a broken piece of wire?
Well, if you look at the screen, you're going to see OL up above. And I intentionally cut this wire so you could see. And obviously, you're not hearing a audio tone. So that means you have a break in your wire. You do not have continuity. You can use this method to check fuses. Uh, now we're going to go over automotive fuses. If you look where the red arrows are pointing, they're pointing towards a filament. On each end of the filament, there is a blade. Now, if this filament happens to be uh, missing or blown, you will have a blown fuse. Uh, here is a good example of what a blown fuse looks like. And you won't get a good continuity test off of this, unfortunately. So, obviously, this fuse is going to need to be replaced. If a fuse is blown, there's a reason for it. You're going to have to check and see what that reason might be. Now this is what a good fuse looks like. If you notice, the two pins are connected by the filament in the center, which means it's a good fuse. Same way with this one. This is just to give you an example of what a good fuse looks like visually. Now in this picture, we're going to check for continuity. In other words, we're going to make sure this fuse is good. Uh, you can do this by connecting the probes right where the arrows are pointing, as you can see here. Uh, I suggest you have the audio enabled on the multimeter, so that way you can tell that you have a good connection. Don't worry about where positive and negative is on the fuses when it comes to testing them. It's very easy to do. This is the biggest fuse, uh, and it's very easy to test, as you can see, by touching the two terminals. Now, on this type of fuse, this is a, a little bit smaller one, uh, and the connections are the same place, so you don't have to worry about it. It's on the top. Again, right where the blue arrows are pointing is where you want to test. Now, on the smallest ones, these things are really small. They're very hard uh, to get to with a multimeter, so you got to probe around a little bit. But as you can see from the arrows on this, this is actually where you're going to be placing them. Now let's say you want to test them within uh, the vehicle itself, within the fuse panel. In other words, you don't want to take them out because these little things are a pain in the butt, uh, especially uh, if you're using a remover, if you use tweezers, there's a possibility of damaging them. So you have to watch out for stuff like that. Uh, if you look where the arrows are, the arrows are going to tell you where your test points are on your fuse panels. So it's real easy to do. Keep in mind your vehicle might have more than one fuse panel. This is inside the vehicle. The previous one was on the outside of the vehicle. Same way of testing them inside the vehicle. This is for fuses only, not for relays. Uh, we'll do relays again down the road. Now if you're an old fart like me, you have a bus fuse like this. This is how you would do a continuity test on a bus fuse. You may not be able, sometimes the filaments will actually bust, not in a clear window, so you can't see it. And it'll drive you nuts because you'll think it's good when it's actually bad. So this is how you test a bus fuse. Like I said, doesn't matter where you connect your negative or your positive when you're doing your continuity test. This is how you do them. Now this is a 194 bulb. Uh, this is where you're going to connect your two probes for a continuity test. You're going to check the bulb to see if it's good or bad. Uh, without looking at the filament, this is how you would actually test it. Again, this can be used on any automotive bulb to test. Now we're going to switch over to the other digital multimeter. If you look at the purple arrow where it's highlighting the green, the light green area, if you want to measure your voltage uh, in auto ranging, this is the one that you want to use. Uh, you can put it on uh, 20 and safely do anything automotive, uh, any kind of batteries. As long as they're under 20 volts, you're fine. Uh, the arrow that's in the red, if you want to test just batteries and be safe about it, you put it on the 1.5, as you can see, highlight by the red arrow and that's what we're going to be doing is we're going to be testing this uh, AA battery that we have here if you look the red and the black arrows your red is your positive and that's where you're going to put your positive lead and your black is your negative lead obviously that's where you're going to be putting that now if you connect these probes backwards you're not going to hurt anything but if you look at the purple arrow it says minus 1.27 if you look at the negative which is the black, it's on the positive. And your positive is on the negative. That's why you're getting a negative reading highlighted by the purple arrow. Simply reverse your negative and positive to get your true results. They'll be the same, it just won't be a negative. It's that simple. Now we're going to do a continuity test with this meter. If you look, the selector switch is highlighted by the yellow arrow. 
this also has the audio beep there's no bush buttons to push or anything like that so basically you put it in this position where the yellow arrows at and you basically connect the two probes together or touch them together highlighted by the red arrow and if you notice it says zero zero one it should be zero 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 across the board this is how you're gonna check your continuity and this will give you an audio beep as well now for more advanced functions I suggest you get yourself some roach clips excuse me alligator clips uh, pfft, my mistake <laughs> um, these are great for testing these are absolutely wonderful if you want to uh, tell the amperage on a circuit which we'll cover later on in other videos if uh, you want to see if you've got a battery drain somewhere if you want to test resistors these alligator clips are absolutely wonderful uh, they can be obtained from Radio Shack. You can get them from eBay. You can get them from multiple sources. I do suggest that you get at least three or four or five of them. Uh, you know, you can never have enough of them. Uh, they are different colors. Uh, I suggest you get red and black. That would help dramatically. Uh, they're definitely worth getting. There's no question about it. Now we're going to check some resistors. Now the reason why you want to check your resistors, you want to make sure they're the right values. If you're like me, you've got hundreds or thousands laying around. If you look at this picture, I've got a thousand of these alone. These are supposed to be 150 ohm resistors. So what we're going to do is we're going to test them to make sure that's exactly what they are. Uh, if you get stuff from eBay, uh, there's a good possibility that could be labeled wrong and you definitely want to make sure that you go ahead and you test these to make sure they're the right values. Now we're going to double check our resistor to make sure it's the correct value do that we're going to put the multimeter in the ohms position uh, that's highlighted by the yellow arrow and then we're going to take our negative lead or our negative wire and connect it to our roach alligator clip and the other end of the alligator clip we're going to connect it to the resistor like you can see here now we're going to take the red lead and we're going to connect that as you can see here by the red arrows uh, we're going to connect that to the yellow alligator clip and the other end of the yellow alligator clip to the resistor now if you look up above we have 149.4 it's close enough because they have a tolerance so those are exactly the ones that I need okay now that we're at the end of the video you can make the decision whether you want to go with a digital or an analog this is an analog that you're looking at a lot of old farts like this and I know I'm gonna offend a lot of people I actually this is my own personal one you can tell how often I use it as it's being all dusty um, let's see the difference between the two as far as beginners are concerned if you want to measure uh, voltage on a battery okay now this is on the 1.5 volt uh, setting for the battery now look at this picture look at it closely okay beginners only now tell me what the voltage is on this battery don't tell me green red or okay I don't want to hear that okay here's a close-up what's the voltage on this battery kinda has your stump doesn't it now this multimeter using a digital what's the voltage on your battery you see where I'm going with this okay let's switch over to the other multimeter what's the voltage you see where I'm going with that. Uh, this is why I like having a digital multimeter. For beginners, it is absolutely perfect. It's wonderful. Um, hopefully, yeah, I don't get too uh, many bad comments and I don't get bashed too much. I'm just trying to help out uh, beginners that uh, have no experience with multimeters. Hope you learned something off of this. Welcome, comments, suggestions, anything you want to come up with. 